Hey guys, welcome back to some all new Cam's Corners. I know 2020 has been a pretty hectic year dealing with the coronavirus. We haven't all been able to get out on court and I'm hoping to make some new videos now that'll give you some, some thought and some plans to get back out there, different things to think about. Today, we're gonna talk about some tactics and specifically what it's like to play off a hazard chase as the receiver. And so what this means is that you are on the receivers and getting ready to play a point and there's a chase set, it's a hazard, let's call it second gallery. And what we're gonna do is talk about different ways you can go about winning that point or set yourself up tactically to be in the best position to win that point. So to start off with, what you'll see is there's some lines on the court here today. And what we have is three separate quadrants that we've broken the court down into. All right, we have quadrant one, which is our return of serve area. We have quadrant two, which is between the yellow line and the tennis balls, which is our middle of the court. And quadrant three, which would be from this yellow line over to the tambour wall, which would be our grill corner. Okay, and what happens here is that these quadrants are very important because where you're playing the ball from within these quadrants should dictate a lot about where you're aiming. Too often we see two types of players in this game. There's the player that overthinks the chase, right? You're playing hazard second gallery, so the obvious thought would be, I'm gonna hit a gallery straight away off my return of serve, right? But what happens if that serve is close in here in quadrant one? We don't really have an angle at that gallery. So we need to take that into consideration. The second type of player is the player who disregards the chase as a whole, right? Oh, I'm playing a hazard. I don't want to think about it because I'm going to make bad decisions. So I'm just going to play the ball wherever I want and hope that I win, right? And that's not tactically smart either because we're not taking advantage of opportunities where a ball could be open for the galleries. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break down what we should be doing depending which quadrant the ball's in. And this is the simplest way to do it. Obviously, as you get better at court tennis, these are gonna change, but these are be your general rules that'll help you build a proper game plan and tactical response to this. So we're gonna start in quadrant one. Quadrant one is closest to the service wall, okay? So if a serve comes in to quadrant one, and we're playing a hazard chase, we don't have very much of an opening to the galleries. We'd have to play over the high part of the net, right? And there's a very small window for us to get that ball into, which makes it a very low percentage shot. And remember, we don't have to win the point on the first shot, right? We can open the game up. There's a reason that court tennis is called the chess of tennis, is because you don't just have to hit one shot all the time to win the point. You can set that rally up to win it later on. So the rule that I wanna give you today is that if that ball comes into quadrant one here, I want you to actually play that ball cross court with your return of serve over the low part of the net into what would be known as the forehand corner. And the reason we're doing that is to open up the court for later on. We may not win that point right off of that shot. You might hit a great shot and you do, but the worst case scenario is that percentage wise, when you hit that ball into the forehand corner, your opponent is then gonna hit that ball up the line, off the main wall, into our quadrant three, okay, quadrant three. So that ball comes into this quadrant, and as my arrow is telling you, we now have the perfect line to go at the galleries, right? That ball is now wide, we're going over the low part of net, giving ourselves the highest percentage chance to hit that gallery. So what we've done is tactically not jump to the gun, and just gone for the gallery in a low percentage shot that either hits the net or goes on the penthouse and loses us the point, is that we've taken percentage confident choices. We've played a nice easy ball cross court off our return. Okay, maybe we win the point, maybe we don't. That ball's now come across into quadrant three, and now we've got a nice good chance to go for the galleries and finish that point off. And here's the kicker. If you miss that gallery low, right, and that ball goes into their backhand corner, it's still a great shot. And if they get that ball back, percentages say that they're gonna play it back to your backhand corner again, giving you another opportunity to go at those galleries, right? So by taking that first step on the return of serve, we've now made the likelihood of us winning that point go up leaps and bounds, all right? Now we're gonna go into quadrant two. Quadrant two is the toughest one because we're in the middle of the court, right? There's 
equal opportunity for either side when we're returning, right? We're in the middle. We have a pretty decent angle at the galleries, but we also have a pretty decent angle to go cross court to the forehand corner. And so what I would say from this quadrant, playing a hazard chase, yet again, this is not an all the time thing, is that we do wanna go to the gallery side of the court, but we don't actually wanna go to the galleries. What we actually wanna do is play deep in the court, right? So that we're getting it into our opponent's backhand corner most of the time, unless you're a weird lefty like me. All right, so what that does is lets us play over the low part of the net that we said that we have from the middle of the court, the likelihood of us putting it on the penthouse is pretty low because now we're aiming deep. We're not aiming at the galleries. And it allows us to hit an effective shot confidently to the backhand corner, which yet again, remember, their likely response, if they get that back, is to now hit it cross court into quadrant three, giving us the green light to go at the galleries. So what we've done is increase that likelihood of winning the point yet again from here. So by simply playing that ball, without going for the gallery, playing a higher percentage shot deep into that backhand corner, we've opened up that they're gonna probably pull that ball into the main wall or into this corner and give us an opportunity to have a better shot at those galleries, all right? Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can't go cross court, but when we're playing hazard chases, we should always be taking into consideration those galleries and opening them up for an easy win. Finally, we have quadrant three. Now, obviously, if the serve comes into here, it's a fault, so we don't have to worry about it. So quadrant three is mainly where we want that ball to end up so that we can finish the point, right? Unless a serve comes in and bounces just in, where you should be taking it here on your forehand, if you're a righty, or for, even for me, I'm gonna take that on the backhand, then yeah, as the arrow says, you've got that green light to go for the gallery. Quadrant three is your, your highest percentage shot going for the galleries, okay? So if you follow these three rules, right, these three quadrants, the likelihood of winning these chases is gonna go up. And the same rule should apply, not just when you're playing hazard chases, but when you're trying to set chases, right? So often we get caught down here at the receiver's end for a game or two at a time, because we're trying to attack the forehand corner or attack the date on and missing. So if you use these rules to set chases as well, you're gonna spend less time at the receiver's end, more time at the service end. And we all know that spending time at the service end is key to winning a match. Thanks guys. Thank you.